I'm Margaret from SA Oscars Law and we're really, really happy to welcome you all here today, especially fairy friends. The speakers that we The speakers that we do have here today are the Honourable Michelle Lindsay, Shadow Minister for the Environment and Deputy Leader in the MLC, Deputy Opposition Leader, sorry. The Honourable Tammy Franks from the SA Greens, a member of the Legislative Council, and Stephen Kenny, who is a director on the board of the RSPCA and a very well-known human rights lawyer. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Stephen to you, and he's going to speak to you about the issues as he sees them from the point of view of a a rights-focused person and a director on the board of the RSPCA. Thank you. And thank you all for coming out. I'll try and stand out there so I, I can see you all. Um, and it's great to see on a Sunday like today that so many of you have come along and that so many of you have actually brought your dogs, which I think is a great thing in our society that we don't have enough of. We don't see enough dogs in, in public. and. Uh, it is nice because they are important to us and, and provide a real uh, balance in our lives that sometimes reminds me of you know, things that are real and are not real uh, and animals are really important. But firstly I'd just like to say that a lot of people don't know about puppy factories and I did have a straw poll around my work before I came here to, to ask what people really knew about dogs and dogs you buy in pet shops and things like that and mostly people said they're not a good idea but we don't know much about them and so it's really great to see all of you willing to come out here today to publicize that but the other thing that concerns me you know we think that there really are puppy factories in south australia and i don't know whether there are or there aren't but what i discovered in my own office was that people were buying dogs from uh, pet shops that had come from puppy factories. So this was a real concern to me. But I'll tell you the story of Baxter, um, one of the women at work bought, and she lives down at Semaphore and walked past the pet shop uh, down to a local coffee shop. And she wasn't looking to buy a dog, but she noticed Baxter in the window and, and was a very small puppy. But what she also noticed was that Baxter had an obvious hernia that after a week or so she realised that the pet shop owner wasn't doing anything about. And so she went in there and effected her own rescue. She bought the dog and took it immediately to a vet. Now she knew nothing about factories, puppy factories or anything like that and had no idea. She went to the vet and said, look, this dog's got a problem. And the vet said, oh yes, come from a, probably come from a puppy factory. And she said, well, what do you mean? And she discovered that not only did he have the hernia, his teeth were also uh, clear. They were not solid. They, the dog had not had sufficient milk when it was a baby. And, and when she got the dog home, she realized the dog also had sort of ongoing personality problems. It was, it was scared of everything. It was shy. It was, it was quite neurotic. And these are all of the effects that we see in puppy farms and they are something that, that we need to avoid. So, well, this is, I've got several messages, but one of them is, talk to people around you who are looking for animals. Tell them not to go to the pet shops, because mostly those dogs will probably come from some puppy factory, even if they come from Victoria or Queensland, where we think this one, uh, where Baxter came from. Don't buy there. The, they, they don't need to. You can go to the RSPCA or other you know, animal rescue services that do have dogs that you can adopt. And they've been well cared for there and loved and looked after. This is not actually an industry that we need, so we can well do without it, and certainly the dogs can as well. And so that's the message that I'd like you to, to take away. You know, when people are talking about dogs, warn people. Uh, about those because once the pet shop owners realise that they are not profitable, then they'll look at other options. And the RSPCA have been talking about you know, trying to work with the uh, uh, pet shop owners not to have pets 
stuck in cages in their shops, but to have you know, perhaps videos of dogs that you could then go and see at your local shelter. And so we need to advance more on those sorts of things. And the other message I have for you is that although it'd be great to, to have some specific legislation banning the, uh, the, the farming of dogs in, in this matter, in the meantime, there are things you can do. And the RSPCA is the government appointed body for the prosecution of cruelty against animals. And so if you are aware of a puppy factory in South Australia, ring the RSPCA, tell them that you know, there is a puppy factory that, at a particular place and that the dogs are being poorly treated. Um, and the RSPCA is not after dog breeders or people who care for their animals. They're not there, but they are there to protect animals. That's what their role is. So if you notify them, their inspectors will go and investigate the matter. And if they find that dogs are being ill-treated, they will prosecute them. And there's been a, a lot of high-profile prosecutions uh, from the RSPCA, and the RSPCA is becoming more active, particularly in the area of farmed animals, so that they are taking a broader role than perhaps they have traditionally. But it is the role that the government has appointed them to do, and they will follow it up. So if you've got you know, any puppy factories in South Australia, or even elsewhere, report them to the RSPCA, and get the RSPCA to go and investigate it. They will do that, and they will prosecute. So we all can do something about it. So I'd just like to thank you for coming, and to remember, if they are, you know, your friends are looking for animals, suggest the RSPCA or other animal welfare agencies, and if you become aware of puppy factories, tell the RSPCA, because all around Australia, they are the bodies that are appointed to prosecute animal cruelty, and they will do it, and we will see that they do it. Thank you very much for coming. We're all animal lovers, I guess. I'd say by the fact that you're all here and we would be in the vast majority of Australians who believe that animals should be treated with care and respect and should not be treated in appalling conditions as they are in puppy farms. So what's the difference between people here and those who, are in, who, who uh, breed animals purely for profit and not caring about their welfare? It's that we believe that there's a minimum standard of care that is owed to every animal that they should be um, kept in proper housing and fed properly and uh, loved and allowed to play and all those sorts of things. Um, the way that the law operates in South Australia at the moment is that we do get, we do get some of this right and as you've heard from the RSPCA, uh, they are tasked with the job of looking into uh, those cases where animals are being treated cruelly and prosecuting them uh, where they can. Uh, there are other things that we can do as well. We're still waiting on the revised codes of practice for animals, which, would, which is looking at things like uh, whether there's uh, immunisation certificates that go with new animals uh, when they are sold to someone. And I think those things would probably help go some way to ensure that those animals have been given that standard of care uh, in their life uh, before they are sold on to someone. Um, the Liberal Party at, our, at the last election had a policy that uh, all animals uh, must be de-sexed and that uh, whether that's from a pet store or a breeder or from a shelter and we also wanted to look at the issue of um, microchipping and immunisation. Now we didn't win the election so that will still be our policy leading into the next election. Um, I love dogs but I love them so much that we can't have them because my husband and I have such ridiculously busy lives that we can't guarantee that we'd walk them and pat them. So instead we've got two very overindulged cats. Lucy came from the Animal Welfare League 12 years ago. She's still going strong. And uh, I've got another kitten that I adopted five years ago and they're both dissexed, microchipped and all those things which I think uh, every animal deserves to have a good home and to be well looked after. Congratulations for turning out for what is the inaugural Oscars Law Rally in South Australia. As we know, last year we saw the first Oscars Law Rally in Victoria and I do understand that we've got Oscars Law Rallies around the country today. So this is a movement that is uh, young but it is growing and let's hope that in fact this might be the last Oscars Law Rally we have to have because certainly 
the, uh, the cause that you've gotten and what you're asking for is something that I think almost every Australian would agree with. That is, better treatment of dogs and uh, laws to make sure that what happened to Oscar never happens to, again. Now, I think most of you here know about Oscar, but I'll repeat it just in case anyone hasn't uh, read the material. Oscar was in fact um, rescued from a puppy factory in Victoria. At the time, he was suffering from malnourishment, infected ears, dental disease, grass seed abscesses and extreme matting of his fur. He was actually returned to his abusers because in fact there the law did not protect him and in many cases the law still is not protecting dogs across the country. It's not good enough and we're here to end that. The reason puppy factories are such a scourge is not just because of the way that the breeding conditions uh, basically suck the life out of a bitch who is bred over and over and over again in disgusting conditions with being malnourished, living um, you know, sometimes in uh, quite putrid conditions where, uh, as if anyone's seen the videos, the smell of ammonia from the urine and the faeces is all around. There is no adequate food. And that poor dog is giving birth over and over again in these putrid conditions and often suffering from things like mastitis as she's constantly on a cycle of feeding the puppies and then giving birth again. It's just no life. For that poor dog but the worst thing is once the dog can't actually breed another litter that's of a, a size to be make her worthwhile for the owner to keep her they are often killed it is a tragic and sad life we do not want to see dogs living like that then of course there's the beautiful little often designer dogs that are bred from that poor bitch she um, suffers a quite horrific life but they also although they go on to loving owners the start of their life is something that they will never recover from. They've been bred in such poor conditions. They've had no socialization in the crucial early 12 weeks of their lives. And so often, not only are they uh, badly socialized, they also have diseases and uh, ongoing conditions such as hip dysplasia and other congenital di um, uh, diseases that would have been uh, sought out and discovered by a reputable breeder. Now I've been to the RSPCA and I have seen the rows and rows of cages of beautiful little white fluffy puppies. I call them the Paris Hilton puppies. They're gorgeous designer dogs and many kids seeing them in a pet shop store would want them or seeing them on um, an advertisement in the paper would want them. The thing is, if we buy them, then we are feeding into that cruelty. And what we need is actually point of sale laws. We need the dogs to all be microchipped. We need proper tracking systems so that when a dog is advertised as sold, a microchip and a number travels with that dog and bad breeders can be tracked down and held accountable for their practices. I'd like to see the passing of Oscar's law. We want Oscar's law and we want it now. Oh, I'd like Oscar's Law also. Okay, I want Oscar's Law. My name's Olivia and I'm a volunteer for SA Dog Rescue and I want Oscar's Law.